Orcs origins. Who are they? How are they made? Every type, their biology, reproduction and powers. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry and this is Marvelous Videos. We only get a few glimpses of Orcs in the first few episodes of the new Amazon series The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. The Lord of the Rings has already ventured towards horror, but the Rings of Power series carves out its very own niche. When Bronwyn, played by Nazanin Boniadi, travels to tell the villagers that a nearby settlement has fallen to god knows what creatures, it feels more like something out of a horror film, as her neighbours dismiss her fears as irrational. It was as if the ground had swallowed up the people of Orden like flies. Round is tetchy always has been. But it also represents a different connection with orcs. These folks are a few decades away from the very last time anyone happened to see an orc, and the very thought of it makes them shudder. They're more scared of a resurrected, terrifying force occupying their settlement than they are of the murmurs of a myth. The entrance of the orc has all the markings of a slasher villain, delivered in bits and snippets. An eye seen through the flooring, a hand clattering as it strikes the ground, a close-up shot of a mouth and its ugly tongue. We glimpse its bony mask in a blurry profile, but we don't see its full ugliness until it catches Bronwyn cowering in the cabinet. The orc here nevertheless adheres to the basic canon. It's a vicious monster with the appearance of a deformed human and an adversary whose combat prowess is nonetheless outmatched by a mother and her child. However, the threat it poses feels very real in a way that many of the other episodes of Rings of Power can't quite bring to life. In the Lord of the Rings film series, a swarm of orcs could be seen as threatening, but a solitary orc here still feels potentially lethal. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. The Pale Orc. What are orcs and where do they come from? Many have undoubtedly wondered where and how the orcs originated. When answering this question, there are a few factors to bear in mind. To begin, we must determine if we're discussing the original orcs or those from a later generation, as there are normal orcs and the more elite Urukai. There's a widespread myth that orcs and goblins are distinct and separate beings, whereas in fact both are simply different titles for the same beast. Tolkien predominantly used the name Goblin in The Hobbit, but he typically used Orc in later writings like The Lord of the Rings. The main distinction between the infamously powerful Uruk-hai and Orcs is that Orcs are often shorter and lean forward while having long arms. They may also tend to be particularly sensitive to sunlight, whereas Uruk-hai in comparison are tall, stand straight and can usually operate in sunshine just fine, although they still really dislike it. To address the topic of where Orcs come from, we'll have have to use parts and pieces from other Tolkien books, because the question itself doesn't really have a simple and straightforward explanation, and therefore having a firm foundation is beneficial because we can build upon it. To begin, let's look at one of Tolkien's works in which he stated that evil powers in Lord of the Rings were not capable of self-sustaining creation, which suggests to us that evil couldn't create anything of its own, but could only corrupt and pervert that which already existed and interact with it. This provides us with a wealth of knowledge allowing us to conclude that orcs present in Middle-earth were not born out of thin air, but rather were a perverted form of something that already existed. Tolkien created the background of Middle-earth over the course of his life, and his writings frequently include more than one answer to a question. To get beyond this, we'll make a list of possible answers as to how orcs actually originated and go through them. So, the first theory is that Morgoth, who was the first Dark Lord and Sauron's master, abducted elves and tortured them, which in turn turned them into orcs. In some of Tolkien's later writings, he indicates that Morgoth may have kidnapped people and tortured them and turned them into orcs using similar methods. The other explanation is that orcs have always been in existence, but they were once soulless, mindless beasts. Morgoth then noticed them and recognized in them the potential to create the perfect minion, so he twisted them to suit his purpose, instructed them and made them into dark and cruel weapons of his will, which he used for death and destruction. This is aided by the fact that when the powerful Dark Lord is finally defeated, the orcs often seem to become very confused and are quite easily defeated by the forces of good. We can see this both when Sauron and Morgoth are defeated, indicating that without the strong will of a Dark Lord pushing them and guiding them, the orcs eventually revert back to their ancient form, that of a mindless, confused beast. The last explanation also included Morgoth. 
He was one of the Valar, who were a type of deity in Middle-earth. When he became evil, he poisoned many other spirits that served the Valar. A few of these spirits were actually quite powerful ones, such as the Balrogs and Sauron, but there were also many less powerful spirits, and a few of these are thought to have assumed the appearance of orcs. So it explains how the first orcs were originally created. What about future generations, though? That brings up the next question. Did the orcs reproduce? Were female orcs ever present? Were they created by cloning? Did they ever hatch? No female orcs are ever mentioned in Tolkien's written writings, but in the Silmarillion, he does write that orcs survived and reproduced in the same manner as the offspring of Iluvatar did, implying that they did breed, and hence, female orcs existed. In the novels written by Tolkien, we also get to see a few orcs having a sort of relationship, such as an orc named Bolg, who is actually the son of the chief of orcs of Moria, Azog, explaining what it's like to have devoured a youngling of a goblin, which implies that there are probably a lot of goblin younglings, parents, children, and so on scattered all over the books and movies who we have no knowledge of. On this topic, Tolkien did once affirm the existence of female orcs, writing, quote, There must have been orc women. However, because we rarely, if ever, see the orcs except as warriors in vast legions in the hands of the wicked lords, we naturally don't know much about their lives. One final point is that there are some speculations in the books that Tolkien wrote, like Saruman may have bred orcs and men. This crossbreeding is thought to have led to the creation of half-orcs and uruk which is why uruk are believed to be more resistant to light, as well as stronger and smarter than the typical orc. Half-orcs are characterized as possessing a human physique, but also with goblin qualities on their face, so they may pass as dubiously human, but others would most definitely know that there is something strange about them. They also used to be very vicious in nature and dumber than the normal man, and they usually also had no trouble with sunlight, unlike orcs. So, was J.R.R. Tolkien the creator of the orc as we recognize it today? Yes and no. Although the term orc is taken from the Old English word orcneus, since it originally made an appearance in Beowulf, the author of Lord of the Rings only adopted the word to refer to a creature he made due to its phonetic compatibility. He also mentioned another inspiration for the term, which was derived from the Latin moniker Orcus, which referred to the cruel and powerful deity of the underworld. As any Tolkien enthusiast knows, the man infamously changed his mind a lot. While he first spelt the term Orc, he subsequently expressed an interest in altering the word to Orc in every one of his writings, although this never came into being. The Orcs were referred to as goblins in the text of The Hobbit. Tolkien subsequently made a distinction between the two, referring to goblins as being different from the Orcs. He is especially cautious to avoid any association with marine mammals who coincidentally have the same name. Orc seems to be the Hobbit's version of the term given to these creatures at the time, and it has nothing to do with the Orca, marine mammals that belong to the dolphin family. In his works, another term for the Orc was Hobgoblins, which he used to characterize the Valkyr form of the goblins. Further investigation reveals that his use of Hob was incorrect, as it typically signified smaller, not larger. Tolkien always maintained that absolutely nothing that was in Middle-earth was intrinsically evil. This included the goblins and the orcs, who were mostly viewed as Saruman's servants. They despised themselves, despised each other, and it's even claimed that they despised Sauron and Saruman. According to certain theories, orcs were formed from the ground. According to the Book of Lost Tales, orcs were, quote, formed from the slimes and heats of the ground using Morgoth's wizardry. Again, Tolkien modified this detail later since it was impossible for Morgoth to produce life entirely on his own. This gave rise to the most widely held belief that orcs had been formed from tainted elves. This addresses the topic of the immortality of orcs and elves, although most people think that this is Tolkien's last word on the subject. It's thought that the contamination of the elves caught by Morgoth involves consuming the flesh of other elves, causing them to lose their immortality and become terribly deformed as a punishment. Other hypotheses also exist, including things like orcs being intelligent but not completely humanoid. Of course, we could go on and on about comparable notions, but the ones described are the most popular and have been referenced and confirmed by Tolkien himself. Orcs were the major soldiers in the Dark Lord's army, as well as the most prevalent of their minions. They were formed in the Years of the Lamps by Morgoth, who was the first Dark Lord, and served him and subsequently his descendants in their attempt to control and conquer all of Middle-earth. Melkor abducted certain elves before Orom discovered them at Quivianan and horribly disfigured them, transforming them into the very first orcs. 
After the war for the sake of the Elves, many Orcs, together with fallen Maiar and other terrible minions of Melkor, remained in the deep caverns, chambers, pits and tunnels beneath Melkor's subterranean fortress Angband. They grew in number and eventually spread over the northern areas of Middle-earth. They were uncovered by dwarves who conveyed the message of their existence to Thingol, who was king of Doriath, prompting him to acquire weapons of battle for the very first time. For centuries, the orcs were simply a minor annoyance, but when Melkor, better known as Morgoth, returned with the Silmarils, he assumed complete control of them and eventually unleashed them onto the land of Beleriand. Denethor, the king of the sparingly armed Lyquendi, was assassinated by the newly organized orcs, although they were finally vanquished by Thingol and all of his allies. They laid siege to the havens of the Phallus under Círdan, and the siege didn't end until the Noldor arrived. The huge casualties experienced by the Sindar at the hands of the brutal orcs terrified them to the point where Melian, the Queen of Doriath, constructed a powerful spell to defend their land. The Lyquendi, who sustained the most casualties in the war, either hid in Osiriand or sought safety in the elven realm of Doriath. Classification of Orcs – Exploring all the different types of Orcs The Fellowship generally encountered the enormous soldier Orcs bred for battle, as well as the Snaga species sometimes which were more suited to labour and hard manual work. Another variety of Orcs are the Snufflers, which are tiny, black-skinned Orcs with large noses that excelled at tracking. Despite his tiny stature, one Snuffler was even able to slaughter a soldier Orc when the two of them had a disagreement. Eastern Orcs The Eastern Orcs was the name for the Orcs who lived in the distant eastern reaches of Middle-earth, being answerable to no one for a long time after Morgoth established his seat of authority in the stronghold of Angband. They were a rambunctious people, as prone to upsetting mankind as they were to fighting, yet they were tougher than their northern cousins, who had survived Morgoth's terrible defeat. Though initially fearful of Sauron, the Eastern Orcs ultimately accepted his rule. They're the descendants of the Orcs who had apparently avoided the Valar after they held Melkor captive in the wake of the War of the Powers, and were among the toughest of that nasty species, undoubtedly more terrifying than those who remained concealed in the North. They had grown used to this autonomous manner of life during Melkor's imprisonment and away from his rule, and they had become an unruly rabble by the time he came back and set up his residence in Thangor. Dream. They were just as inclined to hunt men irrespective of their loyalty as they were to go against each other due to a lack of a unified intent to organize them. Because of their distant position, they lived through Morgoth's downfall in the War of Wrath, making them more prevalent than other vestiges of any evil forces. Even during the period of Sauron's early ascendancy, the Eastern Orcs continued to be a chaotic party that would not quickly bend their knees to him, guaranteeing that his grasp over the Eastern and Southern territories was not as solid as he would have desired. While Sauron pretended to be fair in order to fool the Elves, they mocked him and scoffed at him. Nevertheless, the Dark Lord eventually succeeded in unifying all Orcs, even these tiny tribes in the East, in a unified vassalage based on their shared hate of both Elves and men. Snagger. Snagger was a derogatory word for Mordor and Isengard's smaller and less important orcs, particularly used among the bigger and more powerful Urukai. It's derived from a term in black speech, the dark tongue of Mordor, that means slave or servant. In The Lord of the Rings, there are two orcs named Snagger. The first was an Isengard orc. Snagger was a ranger under Ugluk's command and part of a group transporting Meriadoc Brandybuck and Peregrine Took to Isengard. When Eomer's horsemen raided their camp, he was murdered. In the movies, he is shown to be an orc of Mordor who is under the authority of Grishnak. The voracious Urukai decapitated and cannibalized him. Another orc with the same name, Snagger, was a member of the fortress of the Tower of Kirith Ungol's garrison. On March 14th, he was one of the very few people who survived the bloody Battle of Kirith Ungol in the year TA 1319. Snagger was sprinting down the tower steps when he came across what he assumed was indeed a great elf warrior on top of the stairs. He spun around and ran back the same way he came. The mighty elf warrior was not an elf at all, it was just Samwise Gamgee, who chased the orc but fell behind due to exhaustion. 
Snaga stumbled upon Shagrat, who told him to inform Sauron that they'd caught a halfling. Snaga refused and climbed his way to the highest point of the tower after a brief chase. He used a whip to whip the prisoner Frodo Baggins. He was immediately defeated by Samwise Gamgee and died by falling through the trapdoor. Snufflers Snufflers are described to be a black-skinned race of orcs that is a lesser breed than their orc Snagger brethren, who are most likely related somewhat to the Mordor orcs seen in the Lord of the Rings literature and movies. These Snufflers are a lesser known and less popular orc race in comparison to the others. As described in Tolkien's Legendarium, they would serve as trackers. A Snuffler orc gets its name from its big nose and broad nostrils, as well as its pointy and sharp ears. They're notoriously popular as a species of Saruman's lesser orcs, known as Snagger in the movies. However, they have larger noses than the rest of the orcs and wield the emblem of Sauron on their shields. Orcs of Mordor the Orcs of Mordor, sometimes known as Mordor Orcs, were Sauron's Orc foot soldiers in the Black and Dark Land of Mordor. All through the Second as well as the Third Ages, they constituted the vast majority of his forces in his campaigns to subjugate the Free Peoples. After Sauron made his fortress and stronghold in Mordor in the year SA-1000, he commanded numerous Orcs who fought alongside Elves and men for many generations. The Orcs of Mordor had not only been gathered from the ruins of Morgoth's forces, but Sauron also bred them from the ground up. When Sauron learnt of the last alliance against him, he dispatched numerous orcs from his stronghold in Mordor to attack the allied troops crossing the Misty Mountains. However, the allied forces were too powerful and the orcs were forced to hide. That little detachment was later forgotten and it's probable that they mixed with the orcs that lived in the Misty Mountains. The immense strength and fury of the Black Orcs and the Uruks of Mordor first came out of Mordor somewhere around the year TA-2475 when they were invading Ithilien. They were the biggest and toughest who had pledged their allegiance to the Red Eye. Stuart Boromir later reclaimed Ithilien, but the Orcs of Mordor invaded it again years later, driving the overwhelming majority of people to the west of the Anduin. Orc wars erupted under the reign of Stuart Egelmoth. Sauron appears to be capable of rapidly breeding legions of orcs when needed. According to Aragorn, it had only taken a short time for the orcs in Mordor to grow to the huge armies witnessed in the Battle of the Ring. A couple of years prior to the Battle of the Ring, the orcs began to multiply once more, disrupting transportation along the great river of Wilderland from Osgiliath to Rovanion. At the time of the War of the Ring, a troop of the Orcs of Mordor led by Grishnak joined arms with the Orcs of Isengard upon the plains of Rohan in February of TA 3019. They were the ones who invaded and kidnapped Pippin and Merry. These Orcs then tried to flee east, but they were forced to return when they observed Rohirrim coming. They eventually completely wiped out. During this war, the Eastern Hordes were led mostly by Orcs, and they also consisted of a large majority of troops in the war, who were reinforced by the Easterlings, Sauron's terrible monsters, and the Haradrim. Following Sauron's eventual defeat at the end of the Third Age, the Western army swiftly swept the Black Gate and nearby hills of Orcs, though it's believed that many escaped into Mordor's vast wastelands and steppes. Orcs of the Misty Mountains The Misty Mountain Orcs were clans who lived in tunnels in or beneath the mountains. They had been serving Sauron since the very beginning, guarding the passages and tormenting the people of Eriador. These Orcs were also accountable for Isildur's death and the disappearance of the infamous One Ring. Later, despite harassing the people and territories around them entirely on their own for a time, their bond with Sauron remained strong and even though he gave orders from afar during the main conquests of Dol Guldur, and Mordor, they still managed to carry out his will, inhabiting Moria and blocking the paths through the dangerous mountains. It's unknown where they came from or when they started inhabiting those caverns. They did, however, recognize and despise the blades forged by Gondolin, Glamdring and Orcrist, indicating that they had some recollection of the Dark Elder days. Orcs that lived through the War of Wrath escaped to the east and plagued the dwarfs at the south of the Forodwyth. When Moria's gates were locked during the Dark Years, the Orcs, strengthened and led by Sauron's slaves, entered the mountains once more. Gundabad is believed to have been retaken, implying that it was formerly inhabited by Orcs. Sauron, aware of his enemies forming the Last Alliance, dispatched a large number of Mordor Orcs to harass the allied troops attempting to pass the mountains. However, the overwhelming strength of Isildur and Gilgalad, who traversed through the Pass of Imladris as well as the Pass of Carathras, forced the Orcs to flee. Even Thranduil's depleted army was far too powerful for them. 
The Orcs spent their time primarily undercover in Mirkwood or on the riverbanks, attentive and on the lookout for groups of men or elves that they could overwhelm. After the Battle of the Last Alliance, the Orcs had no knowledge of its conclusion or even of Sauron's demise, leading them to believe he had won. The small detachment of the Orcs was finally disbanded. It was under the leadership of such Orc chiefs in Barad-dûr that Isildur was ambushed and slain at the disaster that occurred at the Gladden Fields in the early Third Age, with their ferocity fueled by the existence of the One Ring. Around TA 1300, the Orcs began to multiply and threaten the Dwarves once again. Orcs of Isengard The Orcs from the land of Isengard, also known as Isengarders, were Orcs that had established their base in the trenches of the Ring of Isengard to serve the Dark Wizard Saruman. They consisted of the majority of his troops, and also a sizable portion of the soldiers he dispatched to attack the neighbouring nation of Rohan. The Wizard's personal breeding of Orcs has to have started around TA 2990. In preparation for Saruman's invasion of Rohan, these troops were imprisoned in the filthy pits dug beneath Isengard. This program featured the interbreeding of men and orcs, as well as the creation or improvement of the deadly Urukai, the toughest and biggest of those who were at the White Hand's service. At the time of the War of the Ring, the wizard Saruman led a huge troop of orcs supported by two regiments of Urukai and Dunlendings to the very first War of the Fords at Isen in TA 3019, when Prince Theodred was assassinated as per the orders given by Saruman. This was done to give him and his Lord Sauron complete authority over Rohan as a component of the latter's battle against the West, but it was also done to make it easier for Saruman to deploy teams of orcs along paths the Fellowship of the Ring were expected to traverse. A group of orcs from Mordor and the Northerners raided the company at a hill named Amon Hen, killing Boromir and kidnapping Peregrine Took and Meriadoc Brandybuck. However, near the outskirts of the Fangorn Forest, the orcs were ambushed and slaughtered by the powerful Riders of Rohan headed by Eomer. During the second battle at the Fords of Isen, Saruman's army of 10,000 orcs, which mostly consisted of Urukai strengthened by Dunlending hordes, was overwhelmed by Rohirrim defenders, forcing the army towards a fortified gorge named Helm's Deep, where King Theoden, the King of Rohan, had decided to make his stand. Despite originally having the upper hand because of their superior numbers and equipment, Saruman's army was crushed in the War of the Hornburg. Bitter at the wizard's ruin of their woodland, the Ents of Fangorn headed out towards the land of Isengard, erecting walls, smashing the orcs, and destroying the stronghold. Half-orcs Throughout the late Third Age, half-orcs were also among Saruman's servants. They were malevolent, lumbering giants with lynx eyes. Saruman's minions also included goblin men, who seemed to be a cross between orcs and men, but were actually a separate race. The half-orcs' origins and nature are unclear. Saruman supposedly discovered during the Third Age that it was actually possible to combine men with orcs, resulting in stronger and bigger orcs, or vicious and clever men. As a result, he produced half-orcs and goblin men to serve him. The Dunland squint-eyed southerner was very likely a half-orc. Half-orcs were also among the Dunlendings that arrived at Isengard under Saruman's White Hand banner. Many were considered to be Saruman's most powerful minions. The majority of the half-orcs were killed at the Battle of Hornburg, either in front of the castle walls or at the hands of the Huorns. More half-orcs eventually joined Saruman in exile and became ruffians in the Shire. Urukai. The formidable Urukai were a relatively new type of orc that came into being in the Third Age. They were quicker than typical orcs and could move throughout the day without being weakened. They were not just quicker, but also smarter, stronger and bigger, while being shorter than men. The Uruks used the sign of the evil Red Eye of Sauron in their devotion to Barad-dûr, the people of Mordor. The Red Eye was also painted onto their shields. At least one soldier on the walk with Pippin and Merry had a black sword with a long jagged-edged blade, which Pippin used to cut the ropes on his hands. They also had long arms and crooked legs. Saruman the White's Urukai wore iron helms with an S elf rune fashioned with a special white-tinged metal on the front. Due to the fact that their shields sported a small white hand, which was the emblem of Saruman, centered on a dark black background, it was obvious that this S referred to Saruman. Aragorn saw that their attire was unlike that of other orcs. 
Instead of bent scimitars, they wielded broad-bladed short swords. Their enormous bows were fashioned of yew wood and were the same length and form as the ones men used. Although they disliked the sun's brightness, they could tolerate it better than the rest of the orcs. Saruman offered them the flesh of men as a gift. Treebeard the Ent openly questions if they're orcs who have been improved in some manner, or if they're men who have been corrupted with orc-like tendencies, or if they're a merging of orcs and men, which Treebeard regards as a black evil. The Uruks, defined as black orcs with enormous might, first came out beyond Mordor in the later years of Denethor I's stewardship. They seized Ithilien and demolished the town of Osgiliath in 2475, but were later defeated by Steward Boromir. In the years to come, the Uruks and the Orcs of Mordor went on to invade Ithilien, which led to its further desertion in the year TA-2901. A few of the Uruks were spotted among the Misty Mountains Orcs that ravaged Rohan, covertly serving Saruman. During the Battle of the Ring, the Uruks from Mordor respected Sauron and referred to him as the Great Eye. At this time, Grishnak was their leader. These Uruks were clearly of Sauron's breeding, although it's unclear if they can be considered identical to the Urukai, who may represent a further upgrade to the race created by Saruman during the conflict. The Urukai, together with the rest of the mannish adversaries of Rohan and the Dunlendings, constituted a sizable portion of Saruman's army. Saruman's legion of Urukai battled against the King of Rohan, King Theoden, and his troops at Helm's Deep. He also helped them with his wizardry. As Gimli, Aragorn, and Legolas pursued the party of the Uruks who seized Pippin and Merry, Saruman's will induced exhaustion in the hearts of the pursuers and added speed to the orcs. Ugluk led the Urukai from Isengard, and because they were the strongest, he felt compelled to lead the march of the hobbits as well, insisting on returning via Isengard. This was the squad that assassinated Boromir. Hobgoblins Hobgoblin was a term given to bigger sorts of orcs in Middle-earth during the Third Age. In the search for Erebor, Gandalf tells Bilbo Baggins that it is said that the Misty Grey Mountains are absolutely full of hobgoblins, goblins, orcs and creatures of the worst sort. Hobgoblins are a kind of gigantic tusked orc located in the Erid Mithrin, or Grey Mountains. The word appears just once in the text of The Hobbit. It's been hypothesized that, quote, the phrase potentially, though doubtfully, relates to the huge soldier orcs known as Uruks, end quote, presumably because Tolkien had not coined the latter term by the time he wrote The Hobbit. In 1971, Tolkien stated in a message to Roger Lancelin Green that the notion that the hobgoblins were a bigger kind is the inverse of the actual truth. Are the orcs immortal like elves? It's one of those Middle-earth mysteries that keeps coming up, and there's been no clear answer yet. Tolkien states in the Silmarillion that orcs were created before the very first age to make a mockery of the elves. Can the fact that the elves don't die naturally mean that orcs are eternal and don't age as well? Or is it possible that they age and die faster as a result of their rotten origin? Orcrist, which was previously employed at the Siege of Gondolin during the First Age, terrorizes the goblins residing in Goblin Town in The Hobbit. According to some, these goblins, or orcs, were there during the fight and have been dwelling for thousands of years beneath the Misty Mountains. Many others refute this assertion by pointing out a plain fact about orcs, that they, like men, dwarfs and elves, also have their very own stories that are passed down from generation to generation. The terror of Gondolin's swords may have been passed down the generations from mothers to sons until the era of the Hobbit. Bolg is the only known orc whose age can be calculated. Azog was murdered in TA 2799, according to some quick estimates that we can make. His son would likely have been born or conceived at this time. In TA 2941, he appears at the War of Five Armies. This suggests that Bolg the Orc was at least 142 years old at the time of the battle, much above the average human's longevity. So, we can draw the cautious conclusion that while not eternal, Orcs do possess some of the properties that make Elves timeless and immortal. How do Orcs reproduce? Exploring their anatomy. 
To analyse the range of orcs depicted in the mythology of Lord of the Rings, both female and male orcs must be involved. Forced and selective breeding would be a method of producing a large number of disposable soldiers. Young children were most likely separated from their mothers at a very tender age, maybe even taken right from the belly before they were born, in order to generate creatures lacking compassion and empathy. Female orcs were doomed to reproduce. They might have been killed off after being compelled to give birth to perhaps a premature child, unless they were able to reproduce again. The fetuses could have been brought up in dangerous breeding conditions after being brutally detached from the mother's body, where they'd have been forcefully nurtured to develop beyond the typical baby stage before being liberated from their confinement and birthed into a horrible world. Because they're descended from elvish bloodlines, their original longevity could have been exceptional. Selection would have resulted in orcs, both female and male, that were best suited to the local environment. Any unsuitable individuals would be brutally eliminated throughout the selection process. Separate, dispersed tribes of orcs may have developed less harsh techniques over time, but the standard would have been extraordinarily cruel nonetheless, as decided in Angband by the source of all evil himself. Another theory states that orcs procreate in the way of men, since men are the original race from which they had been created and tainted. Because of the Dark Lord's enchantments, orcs breed periodically in the way of animals. Mentally, orc coupling is similar to that of domesticated animals, owing to evil enchantments. Their love for their children is stifled. Imps are fostered and schooled by orc females who are either too young or too old to be mating stock. A chosen group of stud males father the majority of the imps in a given cave community. Previously, these bull orcs could have been transferred around the several orc lairs, delivering their services in order to protect the proto-race from being inbred. Male imps are taken under the wing of male orcs when they reach a specific age and trained in what little they really need to know about life, mainly digging, combat and male choral music. Four Edda. Orcs through the first, second and third age, Timeline and Evolution The exact roots of the orc species are a source of contention among Tolkienists and mythical scholars of the Legendarium alike. Orcs had their first known appearance in the year YT 1330. A tiny number of these horrible monsters, presumed to be scouting groups, had entered Beleriand through the passes in the mountain ranges and also through the southern forests, when the Sindar noticed a diverse range of evil beings roaming Beleriand, including wolves, orcs and other wicked beings of shadow. Thingol instructed the dwarfs of Belagost and Nogrod to create weapons for the use of the Sindar, which they employed to chase away the evil monsters and restore peace. Around this time, the dwarfs informed the Sindar about how these fallen beasts originated in the ruins of Angband and could also be seen on the east side of the Blue Mountains, at which location they posed a threat to the elves who lived there. When Melkor, who was now known by the name Morgoth, came to Middle-earth in the year YT 1495, he once again built Angband from its ruins and created the Thangorodrim Triple Peaks to guard it. Morgoth's armies of animals, devils and orcs marched out of Angband in 1497 to attack the Sindar during the First Battle of Beleriand and also the Noldor at the Dagor Nuin Giliath. Both fights were won by the elves and a few orcs made their way back to Angband. At the time, the orcs living on the eastern side of the Blue Mountains stayed outside Morgoth's grasp and were under the rule of their own people, though they squabbled as fiercely as any of the many children of Iluvatar. First Age A large number of orcs were created in Angband by the Dark Lord Morgoth to fight in the Wars of Beleriand, which approximately lasted for 587 years during the First Age. They made their first appearance at the War of the Lamoth, in which they were crushed by the Noldor. Morgoth sent an orc force against the House of Feanor when they returned to Middle-earth. Despite outnumbering the exiles, the orcs were absolutely no match for the strength and anger of the Noldor, and were defeated easily and quickly. Feanor, however, could not defeat Morgoth's power alone, and he was brutally murdered by Balrogs, having left the orcs to breed under the eye of the Dark Lord. Quite a few years later, during the emergence of the House of Fingolfin in Middle-earth, the orcs were sent to fight them as well. However, they were completely crushed in the War of the Lamoth. Despite their terrible defeat at the Dagor Aglareb, as well as a brief foray on Hithlum, 
the remaining orcs restored their numbers. They and their ruler scored crushing wins over the free peoples residing in Dagor Bragolach as well as near Nyth Arnoidiad. They were virtually annihilated during the War of Wrath, while those who survived fled eastward into the Grey Mountains, the Mountains of Angmar and the Red Mountains. Second Age During the year SA-1000, many years later, Sauron resurfaced claiming Mordor as his domain and beginning the development of Barad-dûr. His followers among the Orcs during this time were of the Northern strain, having survived Morgoth's defeat, and it was not until much later that he brought all of their evil race under his rule. The Eastern Orcs despised him as long as he wandered among the Elves in his fair visage. Still, Sauron's servants didn't play a prominent part for a long time, for the Dark Lord had picked a more subtle manner to bring the free peoples under his control by guileful deceit, the main manifestation of which were the Rings of Power. In the year SA 1700, at the time of the War of Sauron and the Elves, the Orcs were the dominant force in Sauron's army. Despite an army of uncountable Orcs, the powerful Dark Lord was vanquished by the combined forces of Elves and Numenorians. Even so, Sauron remained powerful on the east of the Misty Mountains, and the Orcs who lived in the mountains as well as the eastern regions grew in number. The Misty Mountains Orcs declared war on the Dwarfs, leading to the very first Battle of Gundabad and the Orcs' control of the city. Finally, in the War of the Last Alliance, Orcs became the backbone of the Dark Lord's troops, fighting in epic confrontations such as the War of Dagolad and the Battle of Barad-dûr. Third Age In the Third Age, the powerful orcs were Sauron's basic infantry in Dol Guldur and Mordor, as well as his powerful vassals like the Witch King from Angmar and the corrupted Dark Wizard Saruman. Orcs battled for the Witch King in his fight against the Kingdom of Arnor in Angmar. Years later, under the command of the Necromancer, they attacked Eriador. The Orcs from the Misty Mountains, which were one of the select Orcish civilizations with greater autonomy, and their King Azog laid the foundations of the War of the Orcs and the Dwarves, retired into their caves after their defeat. They reappeared in TA 2941 at the War of the Five Armies, suffering yet another horrible defeat and losing Azog's offspring, Bolg. The wizard Saruman started to gather orcs and build his own army in Isengard, both to support the Dark Lord's war efforts on Rohan and also for his own selfish interests regarding the Ringbearer. These soldiers were gathered from among the tribal orc groups of the Misty Mountains and were accompanied by others he bred himself, some of whom were crossed with men. The Orcs of Isengard participated in the War of the Rings early mid-conflicts during the first and also the second battles of the Ford of Isen, but they were defeated or separated during the fight of the Hornburg. Mordor's Orcs participated in many major conflicts, such as the War of the Fields of Pelennor, while also fighting the Battle of the Ring, but a large number of Mordor's armies were annihilated or dispersed at the War of the Morannon. Sporadic combats in the ensuing weeks drove the Orcs out of the west end of Mordor. However, it's unknown how many of the Orcs the Dark Lord actually had in his forces, or how many remained after his fall. The Orcs in Dol Guldur resided in Mirkwood only until the downfall of Dol Guldur, which was one of the War of the Rings' last battles. Orcs as seen in previous adaptations. The Orcs are dubbed by extras in the 1978 animated version of The Lord of the Rings. All of them are humanoid creatures with red eyes and various unnatural traits. Outside of the three different types, there doesn't appear to be much difference among them. The clawed feet and hands, long and sharp teeth, extremely dark body hair, cat-like cheeks, and perhaps their green skin characterize the earliest and most notable type. Furthermore, they also have wide shoulders and a stooped posture. Their clothing is mostly coherent. Many wear long robes similar to togas and double-horned headpieces similar to Viking headgear. A few members of Ugluk's group seem to be sporting jet-black bodysuits rather than togas, and these ones appear to be slimmer than the rest. And at least two orcs, who are seen both at Moria and as part of Ugluk's group, wear very leathery armor and are smaller than the rest. Another less common orc has more ape-like traits, such as huge lips, thick fangs, heavy eyebrows, long faces with flattened noses, and an abundance of hair on their head. They stand upright, do not have claws, and don robe-like tunics with no headgear. 
They arrive after Pepin and Merry are abducted and are heavily featured all through the War of Helm's Deep. Finally, a third kind is shown, somewhat like the former two, but dressed in tunics and head bandages that expose nothing except their eyes and nostrils, albeit at least one is visible with fangs. They're the least noticeable variety, emerging just after Pippin and Merry are apprehended. Paul Frees plays the orcs in the 1980 animated film The Return of the King. They're similar to the goblins from The Hobbit, but they have a grey complexion and are often thinner. Orcs in Peter Jackson's two cinematic trilogies vary widely in appearance. Skin colour ranges from stark white to peachy to green tints. The majority of orcs, on the other hand, are depicted as having deeper colours and a brown or black complexion. A few of them are more human-like than the rest. For example, Azog seems to be a huge, powerful, pale and bold human, whereas Gothmog has a severely disfigured appearance. Orcs are often shorter than most males. Some orcs are depicted extremely slack with bad posture and large with long arms, a form best typified by Grishnak's depiction within the Two Towers, while others, such as all the Uruks, have a human stance. With The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, a new kind of orc was introduced. Small, deformed creatures covered in suspicious warts and mysterious growths. They have pale, pinkish-white complexions, huge heads with bat-like or pig-like facial characteristics. Orcs' clothes and armour in the movies vary widely. They dress in a variety of gear and clothing styles, and they frequently have numerous piercings and scars. Other orcs fight in specially designed and built uniform armour. They're commonly bald or balding, while a few have thick, coarse hair. Their hair is usually black or greying, though several orcs with blonde beards and locks may be seen moving from Minas Morgul in the movie The Return of the King. How are the Orcs in the Rings of Power different from the previous versions? When you see a live-action adaptation of a famous J.R.R. Tolkien tale, it's almost certain that you'll witness hobbits, dwarves and elves throughout the journey. Similarly, Orcs are certain to appear at some point. These twisted, vicious monsters confront the characters of the Lord of the Rings on several occasions and form the majority of both Saruman's and Sauron's armies in pivotal confrontations. Bolg and Azog, two powerful Orc Lords, appear in Peter Jackson's The Hobbit film trilogy. The Orcs in the different films are intimidating and terrifying, and they hiss, growl and roar precisely like you'd expect them to. In the grand scheme of things, though, the live-action orc organisations we've witnessed so far are basically merely factions that choose to fight the heroes since they serve the antagonist, and it's their exact job requirement to do so. Sure, as Boromir discovers tragically in The Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, extremely powerful orcs such as the Urukai have indeed been known to accomplish big victories. Still, Orcs serve the same role as stormtroopers in the Star Wars films. They're unfeeling cannon fodder for the protagonists to take down by the dozen. That is, before Amazon Prime Video released the critically praised Lord of the Rings series, The Rings of Power. It doesn't take long for the series to establish Orcs as a real nightmare, and in doing so, it finally makes them as terrifying as Tolkien intended. Orcs have been portrayed as scary monsters in every Tolkien-themed live-action project. However, in The Rings of Power, the second episode completely transforms them into horror film villains by relying heavily on their digging powers, which Tolkien has stated surpass those of the dwarfs. These orcs not only look like horror film monsters, they also act the part with a lot of jump scares. They skulk in fear like sheltering individuals. They hunt, claw, and as Bronwyn and Theo discover, they're exceedingly difficult to kill if you're not a mighty hero equipped with rare and costly equipment. Even Arondir, a well-equipped and skilled elven warrior, has the shock of his life as he escapes the terrifying adversaries, and then, only when he least expects it, three clawed hands spring from the shadows and seize him from behind. It's terrifying stuff and it's a fantastic take on the orcs created by Tolkien. But they never play a significant role in the movies, far from the immovable monsters Tolkien imagined them to be. Their hearts were of rock and their bodies disfigured. Foul their faces that did not smile, but their chuckle that of the sound of metal against metal, and to none of it were they more gain than to assist in the basest of Melkor's purposes. The author has written about orcs and their maker, Sauron's former boss Melkor, popularly known as Morgoth in The Fall of Gondolin. According to an IGN article on the Rings of Power Orc game, the show's savage and horrifying version of orcs is a very deliberate approach. It was also hinted that the program will include a variety of orcs, including females. Surprisingly, the show's orcs have such a powerful, unsettling impact that even the performers are thrown off. 
Lloyd Owen informed Metro that the orcs genuinely frightened him when out on set. It causes you to have a visceral reaction, the actor added. Conclusion The bulk of hypotheses on where orcs have come from are supported by books written by Tolkien. We also find it fascinating to think about the fact that orcs can have a family, there may be female orcs in existence, or the fact that an orc can really have a baby. We've never seen it in a film before, and it's so difficult to picture that we'd believe it'd be interesting to see it one day, or at the very least, discover more information about it. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, thanks for watching, and see you next time.